Hey everybody, I'm Michael. This is a five minute review for Nancy Drew, the final scene, which is game number five in the Nancy Drew series. And this is another game, which I think is a fantastic one. I would give it a 10 out of 10, although I liked Treasure in the Royal Tower, uh, game number four, slightly more because this game has really long phone conversations. And I think that's sort of what brings it down. A lot of long conversations that you have to sit through, especially with Sergeant Mac Ramsey. He's a funny character. It's interesting to talk to him. But there are no conversation options in that conversation. You just have to sit and listen to him talk for uh, about three to five minutes. It would have been a lot better if Nancy could pick, if you could pick your conversation options and have different conversations. I think that would have been better. Um, also, long phone calls, Sherman Trout. A lot of people like him. I think he's kind of boring. I know he's boring on purpose, but I still don't like that. Also, um, you say she had drop off. Long phone conversation with her. Funny though, she is a pretty funny character, which is interesting because she she keeps telling jokes about how she's old and she's going to die soon, and that's basically all she says over and over and over again. It's still funny. It's very dark, but it's also funny. I like this game. It's it, it's structured. We've got three different days of the game. I really like how it's structured. The fact that we only have three days left to save Maya. It, it, so the story is that Nancy has a reporter friend named Maya and she's kidnapped and this theater is going to be demolished in three days. The culprit says, hey, if you don't call off the demolition, I'm going to murder Maya. Just straight up. The culprit threatens Nancy at the start of the game, which is super intense. And the fact that we have a ticking clock just makes it all the more intense. Nancy responds to this intensity. Just all of her dialogue seems like scared and panicked and angry, especially her dialogue with Simone Mueller, who is a mean Hollywood agent. I love their back and forth. They're so mean to each other. And I know it's weird to say, I like it when Nancy Drew is mean, but that's true. I love the uh, passion and the energy that the voice cast brings to it really helps you get this sense that, oh no, Maya is going to die. Other characters in this game, Joseph, he's a really nice guy who um, works in the projector booth and tries to help Nancy out. Um, Nicholas Falcone, he's also trying to stop the destruction of the theater. He's really funny too. I mean, th this is a funny game. They, they do have a lot of funny moments, especially the... Um, a press conference that is called during the second day of the game. That's hilarious. Also, Brady Armstrong is an actor, and it's funny to see his backstory where, you know, he used to dress up in a chicken suit and wear a curly wig, and he used to have a ponytail, and he really wishes he could have his ponytail back, but Simone made him cut it off, and now he's really mad about it. It's just, I, I love how we go into... Brady's backstory like that. Um, that's good. So the first day of the game, Nancy basically explores the theater, solves a couple of puzzles, and finds a piece of paper which indicates that uh, Harry Houdini was the part-time owner of the theater. Um, that triggers the discovery of Maya's press pass. Uh, second day of the game, Nancy explores the theater again. She finds a secret room underneath the stage. The magician's room solves puzzles to get inside. She sees that Maya's being held hostage there, but by the time Nancy gets there, Maya's gone. The culprit moved her and then set up like an electric fence to destroy Nancy, which is super intense. It, it is very intense. And then the third day of the game is Demolition Day, and nobody believes Nancy anymore. Nobody believes that Maya's still in the building. It's like, how could you risk her life like that? You really feel Nancy's desperation in not being believed. And then there's this really, uh, I don't want to go into spoilers, so I won't say that. But at the very, very end, um, uh, the, Nancy has to hide from the police so she can continue exploring for an extra five minutes. And um, that's when the culprit appears. And it is a really creepy culprit confrontation. It's not at all like game number two, where the culprit is just over the top and screaming. It's like, real life is a soap opera, Miss Drew. No, no, it, it, this is just way underplayed. And that just makes it all the more creepy. It's like the culprit is totally in denial about what's going to happen. Totally fine with murdering Nancy. Um, Nancy has to go upstairs and uh, to the ice room because there's another hidden area. So Maya's trapped inside. Um, she has a puzzle. She has to throw something in the culprit's face so she can turn on the marquee, um, letting people know that, hey, we're inside here. It's a really intense ending because uh, the timer in the corner of the game changes to uh, a literal ticking clock. So it really makes it very intense. And then the ending scenes are great. They're all really funny. Like, uh, okay, Nicholas Falcone has to become friends with Brady. And there's this Brady. He's like, yeah. And Nick is just like, what are you doing? Don't touch me. I don't like you. <laughs> it's so hilarious. Um, 
I'm at five minutes. Okay, did I give a score? If I didn't, um, 10 out of 10, but I still think uh, uh, Treasure in the Royal Tower slightly better. Um, that's how I would put it in the ranking. Still a very excellent game.